let's get going with the session. We're going to be looking in the session. I'm just going to scoot myself down here at the bottom. First, let me introduce myself. If you haven't encountered my resources or haven't been on my um, website, I'm an artist, working artist myself. I'm an art coach and I'm a course creator. I write courses and do teachings like this. And my big passion is to help creatives really reach their potential, not only make their art with more confidence, but really getting it out there, connecting art with an art audience so that you can find people and you can through these wonderful uh, times that we're living in with the online space, use the online and offline spaces to really connect in a bigger way so that you can start building not only buyers, but collectors of your work. And that does take strategic planning. So that is really my passion. I've written a course about it. I've got workshops about it, seminars. And this section, session is a little snippet of that just to hopefully just help you get into 2021 with a little bit more clarity and a little bit more confidence so that you can start to make impact with your art. I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa. I do live in the Netherlands. I've married an amazing Dutch guy, Marco, and I'm streaming from my home in Baden, which is around 30 kilometers outside of Amsterdam. So that's why I am at the moment. And uh, we're going to be looking at three effective art selling strategies. And especially the effective, because there's a lot of ways, you know, you can put your art out there, but we want to see effect. We want to see people actually engaging with our art and buying it, actually willing to pay for it. What we'll be looking at is what is an art selling strategy, three kinds of art selling strategies, and they're very specific depending on your art form and the level of your experience. And then what strategy will work for you. Maybe you're going to get new ideas, hopefully, of what's possible, that it's not just slapping a photo on Instagram and just hoping, praying, and crossing your fingers that it's going to be selling. You're going to get really strategic about the things that you're going to be doing. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this teaching session. Every morning when you wake up, you have two choices. You can stay dreaming about your art goals, about your art, how you envision your art goals, how you envision your artist's life, or you can actually wake up <laughs> and start to do something about it. Because a plan, you know, a dream without a plan is just a wish. And I meet many wishing artists. I coach many artists. And it's like, well, you know, I want to be the art. I love making my art. But there's no plan or trajectory around their vision. And so once you get clear about your vision, you can start to make more impact. And you can start to build a revenue stream not only for today or for one year, five years, but for the rest of your career. And that's what we're looking at. We want to build a sustainable career so that you can do this for a long time, not just for seasons. And you'll know ebbs and flows, but then you can accommodate, accommodate them. You'll know how the art business works, how the economy of the art world works. You get more confidence and really build solid structures around your creativity. So, those two choices and you are here, you showed up today, that shows me that you are awake and that you are ready and you are open to make some strategic choices. A strategy, getting intentional choices, making those intentional choices will give you the momentum to grow towards your art dream. So not only thinking it through, but taking action. And that's where the beauty is of building your art not only as an artist, but as a business person, so that you can have those revenue streams. But it asks getting intentional, so that you need to plan ahead, not just going from painting to painting, not just going from project to project, but you have a long-term trajectory, you have a long-term plan, you have clarity about your art vision. So what is an art selling strategy? I think you can all fill in the blanks, you all have some association with what it is, but it's making those intentional choices, how you're going to promote and sell your art. So there's that making phase, there's the promoting phase, which is very important, and then there's the selling pay, uh, phase. And very often we skip that promoting phase. It's like, I make it, I want to sell it. But there's a whole uh, trajectory between that and how are you going to set up a strategy? What path are you going to set out for yourself to get and connect to your art with potential art buyers 
and you're all on different parts in your art journey. Some of you are just starting out, maybe you're still a student at school, maybe you are starting, you've started to delve, turning your hobby into some kind of more of a career, being more professional, having more time for your art, making more time for your art, making that a priority. Maybe you're an emerging artist, maybe you've been working for a, a while and now you've got a body of work, you're ready to showcase it, you have your website, you have your ch social channels in place and now you can start sharing it with the world. So you're emerging, you're coming out and uh, you're showcasing more of what you're doing. Or maybe you've been working for a long time and you're an experienced artist, you've been selling on a regular basis, you work locally, nationally and possibly internationally and maybe you need to make some pivots and some changes in your business, in your strategies. Maybe what used to work for you, what used to work on your website or what used to work in a gallery for you in a space is not working anymore. Times have changed. Just this year we've seen how 2021 has just sort of thrown us to for the sixes. We've just been surprised about all the, you know, the turbulence that's happening in the world. But all is not lost. There are possibilities. I'm so happy for the online space. If it wasn't for online, we wouldn't be connecting. I'm sitting here with a camera, with my with my computer, and I've got Wi-Fi, and we're talking, we're connecting. And the same possibilities are there for you as artists. So we just need to know how to start using them. So whether you're that starting, emerging, or an experienced artist, that's what we need to be looking at and for you to determine, you know, where are you in your process, because that determines your strategies. So your strategy will develop as you grow. Your strategy is different when you're starting out. It's less about sales. It's more about connecting and building an audience. When you're emerging, it's more about taking people on that process and that journey with you so they can understand more about you, get really excited, intrigued about the things that you're doing. Emerging, then you go to experience. What's an experienced artist? You want to have recurring income. You want to have recurring clients. You want to have recurring, you want to have collectors. You want to show in a bigger way, more consistently. You want your income to be more consistent. You want to have more bodies of work. You want to have more contact with the press. You want to have, you know, have a broader platform, maybe geographically go bigger. So those are different um, goals that you have. Your goals will determine your strategy. And your strategy will help you introduce your work depending on what your goals are. And you're building your audience, whether you're starting out, whether you are emerging, and whether you are an experienced artist, you are building an audience. You are building your business. That's what it is. You're connecting your art with an art audience, and there needs to be that bridge what bridge are you building between that what you're doing and who potentially will buy? And there's no like fast <laughs> route. It's a whole process of building an audience, building trust, building relationships. That's all what sales is. It's all about trust and relationship. And the social channels, your website are great tools for that. If we go back into the offline space, that, of course, is amazing. You can still just have one-on-one -on -one contact with people. But, you know, we use what we have and uh, the online space is there. You can share your process. Your strategy will help you tell people more about you, really get more of an understanding about your art and your art vision. It, it helps you engage and interact with your audience, really to know maybe you're niching in a certain way, uh, space. Are you connecting with the right people? If you are really are, you know, maybe you love painting um, ocean scenes and your audience, the people that are on your social channels and are visiting a website have nothing with the ocean. They don't like the ocean. <laughs> they love the interior. They love uh, maybe more arid areas or have totally different interests or more into animals or or really um, political issues that, that, they, that, more ex that excites them more with art. Then you have the wrong audience. So helping, engaging, communicating, seeing who's following you on Insta will help see, are you connecting with the right people? And of course, the strategy is there to promote and sell. And that's what we're going to be focusing on this session. A strategy is not just any old thing that pops up in your head that seems like a good idea. We have a lot. You are creative people. A lot of ideas pop into your head. Endless. You 
creative thinkers, you solution, you make, you know, think of solutions. So you that's that's not a problem for most of you, but it's to get really specific. A strategy is specific, so it means that you can't do everything. It means that, that some things you need to put on the shelf or save for later and make some choices. Your strategy needs to be clear and it needs to be manageable. It needs to serve your larger goal. Why are you making your art and how are you going to connect that? Through what channels, what route are you going to choose, what path are you going to be choosing? So it's all about getting specific, getting really clear and be manageable. And you can all do that. You all are setting up paintings. You're all making your art in some form or other. And it just is getting into that other mindset that it's also on this side of your process. So not only the artistic side, but the business side of things that you can get really clear, strategic, find things that are manageable for you to do. Have a good idea of your time management. How long do things take? What does the coming three weeks look like to you? What do the coming three months look like for you? What do you want to see happening in 2021? Getting really clear about that. Focusing on three areas, so the starter, emerging and experienced artists. So depending where you are on your journey, that will determine what your goals and your plans are going to be. Different trajectory. And then we're going to look at selling your art. That's our focus for the session. In order to get really strategic, we need to look at what avenues can we use to communicate because that strategy that we're going to be looking at, those three, need some kind of channel. So we can look at the in-person way of communicating and connecting with your art audience. There's the online space and then using emails. So these are actually the channels, you know, like you have a, a tube that you're going to send information through. It can be the in-person, it can be the online space, and it can be through email. Let's look at the in-person. This is still the most effective way of marketing, still the most effective way of doing sales, is having that in-person, one-on-one contact with people. Because people love connecting with people. That's just how we're made, how we are, you know, Relate is still in an inline, in-person way. I'm so grateful for that. Only we've been so limited, especially in these last few months, to do that. But it is still building in-person relations. Have seen that one, those single moments, you know, when you're meeting people at a gallery opening or at events or just, you know, when you chat with people, connecting with it, with them in person. You can share, you know, having also training how to pitch about your work. It's not like you're walking around everywhere just pitching your work, but at the right time in the right place. If you can share at an in-person event, or maybe you are can be a guest speaker, or maybe you are, uh, are being asked to run a workshop, you're teaching at a conference, maybe you have a radio interview, you can maybe go on the local television and share about your work. You maybe there's a place for you to go to schools collaborate with other creatives, all different ways that you can use the in your in-person. How do you talk about your art? The online space, we're all familiar with all the different channels, all the different possibilities, just going to briefly run through them. There's your website. Important part of your strategy is having that website, whether you are starting emerging or experienced. It's a place where people go to find out more about you. It's your business card, depending on what your goal is for your website. Maybe it's your portfolio. Maybe you have a full sales page. You have a sales channel. Maybe you're connected with, uh, with sales possibilities that you are selling, Shopify or with other, there's all kinds of um, widgets or software that you can add to your website to sell. Maybe that's so your website is super important to tell people more about you. Your website is often the place where people will find out more about you before they ever meet you in person. And that's such an important place to showcase what you're doing, to share your passion, to share your products, and to share your process so that they can see the actual working artist. And then you can use blogs, for example, or maybe you're a podcaster. Maybe you have a video channel on YouTube. These are all online platforms that you can um, use to your advantage to get that specific strategy out there. 
There's that organic traffic. And when you're just starting out, that's very difficult because you, Google doesn't find you. It takes time to get uh, seen in Google searches, but it can be part of your strategy to use the right words on your website, to use the right hashtags when you're doing Insta posts so you are getting the right traffic. And that's too much to expound on now. That's a very core part of my course that I teach the Working Artist course to get really clear about all those channels and start using them, the front end, but also the back end. What, what words can you use? and Where do you use those words on your website? And use your social channels in connection with your website to get more traffic. So people, when they search in local artists in Melbourne, Australia, that you come up in the search, or in Denmark, you come up in the search, because you, people will be looking, you know, they may be buying a new house, and they have an empty wall, or they have a new office space, and they're looking for an artist, and they're going to be Googling. That's the organic traffic. The social channels, we all know them, and um, all specific channels with all specific goals, what social channels can you be using? Facebook groups, just like this community, you're part of a Facebook group. It's a great place to connect and communicate with a niche audience. So you can set up your own Facebook group. It's a wonderful channel to communicate with. You can sell your work on your social channels. You can sell your work on your website, but you can also use third-party platforms. There are many of them out there. Um, have a look and see if that's something that's part of your strategy. There's a, lots of pros and cons for using one or the other. Um, I'm going to be doing another teaching about that. But have a look and see what's possible for you. Like Etsy and Art Find, Saatchi Art. I will share a little bit more about that in the teaching. You can guest blog. You can get editorials in magazines. You can be a guest blog on other people's websites and other people's blogs and other people's um, podcasts. So many, many, many channels. Patreon, I don't know if you know Patreon. It's a funding platform for artists that people can become your pa patrons. And uh, whether they, whether you know, they, they maybe they love your art and then they can uh, sponsor you. So go to patreon.com. It's a wonderful website for artists who are looking for funding. Um, so maybe that's a platform for you. So here are some third party platforms for you to consider. If you're not going to be doing the sales yourself, you can build a relationship with a third party. Some of them are very large, some of them are more local. So just Google and see, you know, what platforms are out there and interesting for your art. Maybe in a certain niche, or maybe in a certain genre. What do they need? Look at the terms and conditions. Look at also the pricing system. What do you need to pay them? <laughs> what is their commission? What do you need to deliver? How much visibility will you be getting? All those things you need to consider when working with a third party. These are some examples of third party sites that you'll be seeing when you um, go and visit these channels. We have Saatchi Art, Art Fans, Art Pals. There's all different shapes and sizes of uh, different uh, platforms. Art Finder, Fine Art America, that's the largest uh, platform. Sales, um, they sell uh, originals, at least say high quality prints, reproductions. So different kinds of uh, pricing points. But those are third party platforms. So that could be part of your strategy. One of those three strategies that we're going to be looking at, these are channels that you can use. So you can use that in the in-person to use that your strategy, the online space, and then email, something that you don't hear a lot about. I know some artists that use it and some artists that haven't used it yet. It's the strategy, part of the strategy that was just so made such a difference in my business because you're not only communicating through the World Wide Web, which is a huge busy place, but you are sending regular emails to your followers. You're building up your own tribe. You're building up your own um, client base. And these are the people that are really interested in what you're doing and you're communicating in a more direct way. Someone's inbox is a little bit quieter than a Facebook feed. Facebook feed, there's so much happening, so many... Um, impressions and people are posting and there's lives and there's ads and everything happening it's not a very nice always a nice place to experience art because it's such so busy and what you need to do is to add that email section to your strategy so you're taking people from your social channels and you're bringing them onto your website where they can opt in 
to have your regular content or a newsletter or an update and you find interesting ways not boring newsletters with a lot of text because people aren't reading people want to be inspired and especially now in these times you can offer so much inspiration if you find your voice how you're going to be communicating and send that in a regular update so you stay top of mind so people when people think of an artist whether it's local or national or international they're thinking of you because you've been communicating with them and email is such a powerful way to build relationships offering some kind of value so it's worth that five minutes that people are opening up your subject line you know it's interesting subject line why are people reading this so not just like all about you make it about them how can you make their day and you can use email for that you need to set up an email service provider Maybe familiar with Mailchimp, for example, or Flowdesk. There are many email service providers out there. It's actually a service that control where you can sort of house your email addresses, and then it's very easy from there to send emails. You can set up campaigns so that you can have your own template, so that people recognize your brand style. They can recognize your logo. They recognize your your sort of look and feel that it correlates with your website. So people think, oh, now I'm really are communicating with Anna or with Sally or with Joran or with Sissy. This is really uh, something that I'm familiar with. Yes, that's his or her email and um, they've chosen to be on that email list. You need their permission. Fortunately, there are laws in place, so there's no spamming. That's not what this is about. This is about people giving you permission to send them regular content and make it interesting and, and inspiring for people. And then you have direct access in that inbox which is a special place, you know, people don't are very wary of uh, getting a lot of emails and rightfully so. So make sure you use that opportunity. Using email as part of your strategy. I can only say, encourage you start building your email list today because that's really going to make a huge difference in the months to come because you have direct contact with people. You connect with them, you can really share your story. So important part of this strategy. So whether you're going to use the in, in person, which is a little bit challenging <laughs> nowadays, but we're going to get back there. Those galleries are going to be opening. They're going to be art events again. They, it's all going to come back. Now we're focusing more on the online space and definitely part of your strategy should be using those emails. So think through what elements are you going to be using in your strategy? How are you going to be connecting with your art audience, potential art audience. What social channels are you going to be using? How does your website look? Do you need to revamp or change some photos? Do you need to get some professional photos made? Do you need to really get intentional about the things that you're communicating on your website? Because you're not only building an art career for today, it's for the rest of your art career. You're building an art business. You This is something that you want to earn revenue from. So you don't have to hustle, have all kinds of other revenue streams but you can start making a plan so that in the future you can build a business structure around your creativity. I'm just going to hop into the comments and just see if there's anything you'd like to comment on at this point. There will be a Q&A at the end of the session. The session will also be in the feed of this community and on IGTV. So it's an ongoing conversation. We're all in different parts. Maybe I'm just totally overwhelming you with a lot of information. Or maybe you have specific questions. You can add them to the comments and we can have a look at them at the end or maybe now. So I'm just going to jump in there quickly and see if you're all still there <laughs> and if you have any specific questions. When I want to sell my art online, which content should I talk about when I do a blog, podcast, YouTube channel? Content that helps me promote and sell and brand. Not helping artists to sell art advice. Not helping artists to sell art advice. Start to think like your art audience. What do they need to know before they start selling a painting? Uh, before they start buying a painting from you. Really get into the mind and the head and the heart of an art audience. It's a different perspective than you from you as the artist. 
before people buy from you, they want to have some kind of idea, are they, am I making a good investment? So you can talk about everything, how art is important, how art, is, how art inspires you, your process. What step did you go through to make this painting or what steps did you go through to make this art form? And then you can become and position yourself as an expert about framing, about how do you care for art? How do you hang art up? How do you light art? How do you invest in art? About other artists, you can be blogging and podcasting and sharing about other artists that inspire you. So that you can share the love and uh, cross pollinate and promote each other so that you can enlarge your network because the other artists will be grateful and the chances are quite large that they're going to be starting to promote you. So think about what subjects, what interesting ideas, and just brainstorm, just write down to a brain dump all the things that your potential art buyer would be thinking of. Maybe you are living in a certain area, like I live close to Amsterdam. What's interesting art in Amsterdam? And you start and you make a nice uh, PDF with the 10 must-sees uh, for art lovers in Amsterdam. And you can put that as a PDF on your website. People can opt in to receive that and you've got their email address and you can start regularly con connecting with them. So it's not so much, you know, just only your painting, of course, your process, you, you all have interesting lives, but you are in the creative business. So you're already thinking about all the potential and all what's out there. But take some time just to write down what do people, what are people interested in? And you can ask people, maybe you have people in your family, you're going to be sitting down, hopefully for some Christmas dinner and uh, next week. Ask people, what are you interested in? What would you like to know from an artist? And just write it down. And then just, just do a Google Doc or on your phone, make a voice memo and just collect ideas. And when the And the more you start doing it, the more you'll get into the flow. So hopefully that answers your question. What's the best and fastest way to build an email list? Creative process, creative growth is always slow and steady. In this um, business, as an artist, as an art entrepreneur, there's no fast track. So it's all about relationships. Sure, you can buy an email list. You can buy them, you know, for two, three hundred dollars and you've got a whole list. You can buy Instagram followers, but it's not going to get you anywhere because you want to build a list, followers, that you have that have something with your art that really appreciate your art you'd rather have 10 on your list than 200 that don't really want to hear from you that you just end up in their spam or they just unsubscribe it's building relationship really getting understanding what do they want to hear what's worth their five minutes why are they engaging with your art what triggers them and excites them about the things that you're doing and send continue you know whether it's once a month once every two weeks, that consistency is important because you'll be coming up into the inbox, they'll be seeing your work and then they'll be following along. Maybe take them to your website or your social channels. If you're active on social, you can say that you have um, content on your website. So use your ch social channel to bring people on your website because you need your opt-in form somewhere. And you're on your website, then you have that opt-in form and then people can follow along on the journey, get insider tips, get um, a tour of whatever. I saw an artist last week, she gives a tour of New York, interesting arts th uh, places, a virtual tour, people can opt in and then get that virtual tour. Then they come onto her email list and then continually communicating with them on a regular basis. So there's all kinds of ways. It needs to be authentic, you're not, you know, it's not all just about selling your art, it's about relationship. You're building a business, you're building a structure and community around the things that you're doing. And that has longevity. That's what's going to be sustainable and not a fast thing. So definitely the website, opt in, use the social channels to bring people to your website. Um, do I have a template to build a build your story for the website? I'm not sure I understand the question. They're all different kinds of templates, and of course, there's different uh, kinds of um, 
providers, we look at Squarespace, it's great on how many artists that use Squarespace. I know artists that just have an Etsy shop, there are different ways of setting up your website structure. And you can find templates that are visually, of course, interesting, where photos come out really beautifully, where you can use your text that is your brand style so that you have the right fonts, you can use the right coloring. So just look and see what's out there. It's the same with an email service provider, Google search. Ask people, I will be showing some examples in this session of artists, what artists are using. So hopefully that'll help you. What is an opt-in form? Very good, good question. <laughs> an opt-in form, there is an example further down in the session. It's a form where people are filling in their email address. Maybe that sounds familiar. Maybe you've signed up for a newsletter. And that's really a tip. Sign up to people's newsletters. Sign up to artists' newsletters and see what they're doing. See what you like, see what you don't like, see if it's irritating, see if it comes into your happy space. But that's like a form that's in your on your website where people fill out their name and their email address and they say subscribe or add me to your list. But I'll show you an example. That is an opt-in form. So that's uh, hopefully that answers your question. Let's continue. Thanks for all the great questions. And to continue the conversation, we can go back to them and uh, I'll also look over them after the session and keep the conversation going. Sales is not just going from making your art to selling your art. There's a whole system of promoting your art in between. And that we can split up into three phases. I call it a launch. It's like a rocket that's being launched. It's a marketing term, something that's going from the ground, round zero, whoosh, being lifted up, becoming more visible. Your art is being more seen. People are engaging with your art. So it's you're launching, you're coming into visibility. And there's three phases. You have a pre-launch phase. So that's actually for, before the launch, before the opening of your exhibition, before the coming out of your beautiful art, before your show, before a virtual um, exhibition. You have that pre-launch. Then we have the launch. So that's when it comes out, becomes more visible. And then you have the post-launch important part forgotten by a lot of people a lot of artists forget the post launch and just go on making the art but that's such an important part of this whole system the cycle of sales so three phases you have your pre-launch time you have your launch and you have your post launch so bear that in mind when we're going to be looking at those three strategies we're going to define how are you going to be doing this three effective sales strategies Let's start with the first one. It's a specific strategy, and I call it the current. So you're using your current work. So bear that in mind. The second one is working in collections. And the third strategy is in collaboration. Three specific strategies that I want to break down briefly in this session, starting with current. Also known as quick releases, something that you have the beauty of what we are doing nowadays with all the technology you can actually finish a piece today you can put a photo have it make a photo with your mobile phone or with your dslr camera put it on your website or put it in your shop and sell it by the evening that would be the ideal situation it's possible so that's something that you are working on it's really um, very um there's a nice energy about it you have revenue streams that can be consistent it's a short launch plan so you have a don't have a very long pre-launch period where you are building anticipation and doing a whole promotion uh, uh, strategy you are posting you're making it you're posting it and you are selling it or you have it available for sale and it's usually towards the low end of your um, range price range because it doesn't ask you know if you're promoting something For 20,000 euros, you need a longer trajectory. You need that longer pre-launch phase to get more people interested, to get more people aware of the things that you're doing. A larger following, a larger um, client base. When you are going towards the low end uh, products, it can be more people are, of course, more ready to buy something for 25 euros or 250 euros. It doesn't need such a long trajectory. So that's sort of the, the lower end. So that's the current, using your current work and putting it up for sale almost instant. It doesn't have, you're not going to bundle work together like in a collection. It's, you have it finished, it's going up for sale. 
And the advantage of that is that you have rev regular revenue. There's a consistency in your revenue and there's a consistency in your um, communication about selling. But the downside to that is that it's, you are always selling and people don't just want to know about selling because if it, your art business just becomes about selling it all just becomes about the product and your art business is so much more than just the product it's about a whole process behind it it's about inspiration it's about uh, education it's about giving people a wonderful experience and of course you want to sell that's why you you know you're here and also you're making your art you need to pay for your art materials and your life and your lifestyle so totally get that but it's more than just sales, sales, sales. And when you're doing it on a current basis, the tendency is that every second Insta post is about a new painting that's come out that's for sale. So that's something you just need to be aware of in that first strategy is that you do offer other content. You do offer other experiences so that you share also your process. You also share about, um, about you as a person so that people also get to know you because people buy art from real artists from, that are real people. Art buyers are real people. So you post, you create, you post, and you sell. That's strategy number one, the current one. And artists, I just want to highlight as far as uh, the current is concerned, is um, friend Rachel Tenelach. She's from Boise, Idaho. I got to meet her a few years ago when I made a trip to Boise, Idaho in the USA. And she's a contemporary landscape painter. And she uses this uh, strategy very effectively. You should check her out on Instagram. Her handle is Tiny Expense. And she set herself a challenge that she was going to paint every day. They're small little paintings on plywood. And so she paints every day. She's done that four years, not consecutively, but she's done four 365 day challenges where she paints daily, whether it's in the morning, noon, or night. And then inside, outside, and then she, at the back of her artwork, she writes the dates, writes the, um, the, the, the longitude, latitude, where it was, and maybe just a thought or something that was happening when she painted that. She finishes those paintings and then they are available on Etsy. So she has an Etsy shop. She's made lots of revenue through Etsy. She's been busy for a few years. I think I thought saw that you can see that here that she's made fifteen hundred more than fifteen hundred sales on her Etsy shop, where she's continually um, sharing content on her Instagram feed. When she's made, you know, that when you're doing it on a daily basis, it's nice of content you are making a lot of art, and then reproductions. She has a calendar from the daily art. So she's got a 365 day calendar. She's made good reproductions. So if certain paintings that really you know, appeal to people that seem to be selling a lot, she's made reproductions. She's making a lot from the reproductions of this too. So she is repurposing her art and using it in different spaces. So that's maybe a strategy for you. Can you find a challenge for yourself? Maybe just once a month, if that's more doable with your time, if you don't want that pressure. Or every Friday, you have um, art release Friday. And so that your followers know that every Friday, Sally is going to be coming out with a new painting or with a new art piece. This is art that you can do within a week or do within a day. Of course, not every art form lends to this. If you're making beautiful sculptures and it takes you three months to make your sculpture, then of course, this is not going to be working. This is not a strategy for you. But does your art form allow you to make something in a short period of time that you don't need to communicate very lengthily about it to launch it in a big way and that you can have recurring revenue stream and you have interesting content that you can um, put online through your Insta, Facebook and your Facebook page. And of course, Etsy is a wonderful place if you have low end products and you're willing to do the work because they won't sell themselves. It's a really crowded place. <laughs> And whether it's also fitting with your strategy, you know, if you're selling very high end art, it's, it is not the place for you to be. So think through whether this is something you want to add to your strategy. You can have high end. I know Rachel, she has products in high end. She works in collaboration with environmental organizations, works a lot on with collaborations, but also has this as a revenue stream. 
and to get you started as a starter this is great and it'll just make you a better artist you're working all the time he's got that momentum going so look at her insta feed she will be a guest on my podcast shortly so have a look at that episode she really shares some great tips to uh, get you going and to set up um, revenue streams diversifying revenue streams so that's first strategy the second strategy is working in collections and this is a very effective strategy um, that you need to build into when you maybe not as a starter but as an emerging and experienced artist because you're working in a collection you're working in a theme in a series so maybe you have a period of time i'm just going to get my thing here let me just put myself a little bit bigger Hopefully this is helping and inspiring you and just getting you thinking of being more specific about um, your art, selling. But I really encourage my students and also the artists that I coach to think of your year. What is your year going to be looking like? And I envision that as a circle because it just seems to help my brain um, get a better idea. This is December. This is where we are now. This is June. We can break the year into four quarters. If you are running a business, those four quarters should ring a bell because that's when also how the tax system works. <coughs> well, that's in where I am, and I know many of the your nations work like that. <clears throat> and then each quarter has got three months. So it's December, January, February, March. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So this should be in your brain as a creative. Okay, I've got four quarters. The year starts in two weeks' time. We're going to be starting with our first quarter. And when you work in collections, you have a longer trajectory. You know that within three months, say in March, you want to lawn you finished with a series you finished with a body of work you've made say 25 paintings or 10 or 5 it's usually multiple pieces that you put into a collection around a central theme and you want to launch that in march which gives you two months three months depending on when you launch in march march to work on that series throughout these months you are communicating on your social channels on your website you're telling people, I've just started a new series. It's working around a central theme. This is what inspired me during my vacation, or this is what inspired me. I'm really ticked off about this, or this is really getting me frustrated. I'm going to put it into an art collection. Whatever your inspiration and your art form is, you are working in a series. And you are going to promote that in a, your pre-launch is, for example, those two or two and a half months and then you're going to be selling so you're not selling current work all the time you're saving up your artwork and you are choosing a certain time specific time and place to sell it's like when you're building towards an exhibition or an opening or large project that you're working on so that's something for you to bear in mind that you can bundle your work and then really get momentum going for to promote it usually one to three month plan ahead so is that something that you can think of is there a theme that you can be working on or maybe you are working in a theme what pieces have you made how can you bundle them and how can you put that into some kind of collection and launch that as a whole and what communication can you use for that of course, when you're working like that, you need to have some kind of buffer. You need to have those, you need to not have to sell anything for those two months while you're working on your collection. That's something you can grow towards as you become the emerging experienced artist. And then have that clear launch plan. How are you going to be launching it? Is it a virtual exhibition or are you going to be able to put that in a physical space? You can take those two months of working on your collection, working on your 
see theme and your series with around the theme and in your series to communicate to your social channels or more focus on the process about what you're thinking about detail so you're not showing the whole work maybe at a distance on an easel but you are just showing little snippets you are like the appetizer for the launch and so that you can create momentum and, and anticipation and that's just the best sales strategy that anticipation gets people excited about the things that are coming you really are intensifying as you are building going towards that release moment you can intensify the communication so you can see my board so here you're starting off with a new idea, a new collection. New, say, with your first paintings within a three month period. And here's your launch date. So, say it's the, the 20th of March, 2021. You set that date already, put it on your calendar. That's when I want to have my 25 paintings, my five sculptures, my whatever amount that you can do within those two months or three months. And then your can start communicating that and usually that you can start like this the intensification so these are all different posts blogging getting the press involved as you're finishing your collection towards the launch date here so you can start off just with the process that you're starting off so it's more low-key on your insta feed on your facebook you can do a YouTube live or go Facebook live and just tell people that you're busy with that. And as you're going towards your launch date, you intensify, you post more, you try and get guest blogs and uh, get onto guest podcasts and towards your launch date. So you really come out with a bang and people know about it because people need to hear something eight to 12 times to get your attention. You think, oh, I've posted about that already, Sonia. No, then you need to have regular postings on different channels in different forms with different photos with and then use your online space use your email and use that in-person uh, possibilities so that you can take your followers on that journey with you to build momentum momentum great selling strategy so is that a, something that you can uh, think of that you can use for your business for your art working in a collection something maybe you can grow towards maybe that need you have to have a month cycle now because you need revenue so what can you make in january to sell by the end of january how can you start communicating that if you clear okay the 31st of jan i want to have those two three paintings done it's in a collection um, setting how am i going to communicate that what channels i'm going to be using and um, you know what content are you going to be using for that an artist that does that very successfully is Jonah Smart. He's a uh, potter based out of uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Well, he's just now moved to the Highlands uh, of uh, Scotland. But he doesn't sell throughout the year. He works in a collection with his beautiful ceramics, makes X amount of pots, tells people to, the shop's not open, will be open again at the end of um, March. Have a look at his website. I put the URL out there. He is in the process of moving to a new uh, studio. He works with his wife Emily. She's a wood uh, artist and they have a wonderful collaboration. And uh, it's a model and a strategy that they're using. So they don't have the stress of having to sell all the time. And they're like, well, the shop's closed. You can't buy anything now. But on the 31st of March, it's opening again join my newsletter i'm going to be uh, here's the opt-in form by the way here at the bottom <laughs> that's what you fill out you can stay tuned to what uh, what they're doing and then towards as the shop starts opening you get more emails so join his mailing list that'll be good for you to see and to follow along and then usually within 24 hours he sells out so all the work that he's done because collectors are waiting and people collect his work. And that's something that I hope for all of you in the future that you get people that collect your work. And of course, that's different to, for different art forms. But people, you know, want to have more of you. And if there's that scarcity within the, you know, they can't buy all the time. 
originals, maybe your prints, they can buy an HC, but the originals, they, you, know, you build that uh, anticipation. And that's a revenue stream that he has, you know, he can then has enough revenue to have another two months in his pot, in his, uh, uh, with his potter's wheel, and he can just make really focused time to make his art and not have to worry, I have to sell. No, the shop is closed. In two months time, it'll be opening again. But that only works because he's been building relationships. He's got quite a few followers on Instagram. He has been active also with his newsletter, works in collaboration with his wife, you know, different art forms uh, work together. So that's something that you can consider using, collabor uh, using a collection model as a strategy for your art or that you can grow towards. Another artist that does it very successfully is Tyle Duncan. She's a US artist, a painter, and also works a lot around themes and series. So all around beach scenes, all about portraits, all about different uh, uh, themes, and then puts them in a collection and sells them. She also does the current, so she also sells reproductions on a more regular basis, but an artist that's doing very well and is established and has a clear art vision, clear aesthetics, also a consistent a way of uh, posting on Instagram. So have a look at her uh, website and social channels and join her mailing list. She also has an opt-in form on her website that you can follow along. Bringing us to the third strategy. So we have the current, the dripping, the regular, then we have collection, putting everything together within two or three months and then selling. And then we have collaboration. And I think in 2021, this is going to be a very effective strategy if you're willing to start to connect with other creatives. I think there's ever been a time we need to bundle our forces, bundle our um, resources, bundle our networks. It's now. And fortunately, people are being far more open, have more eye for one another, that we're not on islands. We all are working, need to be working together. So this strategy of collaboration is when artists join together. And there can be artists from different disciplines, usually between three to eight um, artists, joint forces, working around a central theme and, and uh, working in a series and are working towards, just like the collection model, a certain date. The advantage of collaboration strategy is that you're reaching far more people because all those artists that are in the collaboration, that are in the alliance or in the, in the group also have a network. They all have people that are following them and they might just be interested in following you too, or coming onto your email list or buying your art eventually. So it gives you just that possibility to enlarge your network. And important to work around similar price ranges. So not the one is in, depending on the art form that you make some kind of, um, choose the right person that you can collaborate with that you're on similar price ranges so that it doesn't become too confusing for art buyers so that you are sort of in the same kind of um, the level and um, not genre, but more in the experience, how people experience your art. So just have a think, can you collaborate? Can you start a project uh, maybe in January, start connecting with artists that you know, and they don't have to be the same art forms, who can you start working with? and send them email or jump onto Zoom and have a chat with them and say, maybe there's a central theme that you want to work on. How are we going to be joining forces? You can set up a specific Facebook group and that's, you know, it's all free. You don't have to build a whole website, which is great. Of course, if you want to have some kind of alliance or a collaboration, you can set up a specific website for that specific project or a Facebook group. So easy to set up a Facebook group. It's free. People can join, people can share, people can link, you can do Facebook lives, you can do all kinds of fun things to get more exposure. And um, just make clear arrangements with the artists that you're working with, or maybe you want to join a collaboration, look online, there are lots of open calls to join collaborations, to join art alliances, to join different networks. Just do your homework and make sure that it's a safe place and, and that will really bring the best out in your art. Just Google search the people that are involved. Look for people that have written down some kind of a comment or um, that have experience maybe working with those different artists. But definitely a strategy for you to consider. It does 
ask a little bit more work because you know you don't have just your own um, base or just not your own steps that you need to do you're working of course with other people so you do need to show up in a bigger way and of course you make a commitment so you want to do that properly and uh, come meet your end of the bargain that's a possibility a student of mine monica mayer has uh, is a beautiful um, sculptor in the south of germany and um, she has been now finding an alliance it's with the sculptor alliance that's an international alliance so she's been working with other sculptors other sculpt how you uh, sculpt is so different from installations to stone to wood to 3d virtual it's all different kinds of kinds of sculpting and uh, so she went through a whole sometimes you need to go through a whole commission to get part be part of an alliance uh, so check her out on social on insta and also on her website and that just has enlarged her visibility has given her a totally different platform that she's now engaging with artists and this is a post on her insta feed and it's about the alliance it also shares a little bit about it here so go on to her insta feed and you can uh, read more about it so these are three very distinct strategies that you can use so it's not just i'm making my art working from painting to painting and we'll see now that's not a strategy a strategy needs to be clear it needs to be distinct needs to be manageable it needs to be specific and have a think through what is going to be your strategy are you clear about what strategy you're going to be using? Are you clear about what your year looks like? Yeah, I've got my famous calendar right here. Get a calendar, get a planner. Make sure you have an idea what your year is going to be looking like in 2021. Mark those dates. When are you going to be having those paintings done? When are you going to be having that art done? And reverse engineer. What do you need to do? How much time do you need to spend? Do you need to make some financial investments to get that more visible and out there what social channels do you need to use so that you can become very intentional about the things that you're doing let me know if you have any questions about these three strategies maybe you've tried a strategy maybe you have some tips that you want to share with the group love to hear from you as we finish off this session Gonna jump into the comments. And I'll just hide this. All right, let's see what you've been adding to the comment section. A web shop where it's always possible to purchase my art is not working. Only anticipation strategy and release is selling art. Do you know why it's not working? So the, if I understand you correctly, the collection model, the collection strategy is best because you're building that anticipation and momentum to get people, um, so to get more visibility of, of your sales and your sales platform. It's good, I mean, it's try things and if you see things are not working, evaluate. Why is it not working? What can you change? What can you learn from other artists? Well, how can you make it more effective? Is it your pricing? Is your pricing too high? Is it your photography? Is it uh, your communication? Do you have enough communication going out? to meet those um, revenue goals that you have to get more momentum to your um, platform. How many sizes of prints can I offer? Is five sizes too many, many too large? It's all about what is your intent. Consider the nation that you're setting to, what are the sizes of the frames that are available, just use standard sizes so people don't have to wreck their brain. They can go to Ikea and get a frame if you send them unframed or at the local store or the web shop, that their frames available for them. Of course, you can sell uh, larger pieces. It's just a, a small to larger pieces. Five sizes um, seems doable to me. It's just that you need to have products. So I don't know if you're uh, printing on demand or if you have 
product, the more you have, the more investment you need to make. You need to have things readily available. Um, but look and see what sells. And maybe you need to start off with three, three that really sell. And if you can really focus on that, don't give people too many options. Because if people have too many options, they usually don't choose. So if you can make it more specific, hone in, say three sizes, and really promote that and show it framed, unframed, beautiful photos in a lifestyle setting so people can really see it and envision that on their walls. Or, you know, if it's a postcard, can really see it in, in how it would engage in their life, then uh, you're good to go. If I'm planning content for my social media to grow my email list, what do I need to focus on when the audience might have two different needs? One wants to just buy art and the other wants to learn to create. How would you approach this? That's the wonderful thing about building an email list with an email service provider, for example, like MailChimp. I have, for example, have I have art students, I have artists, I have people in different language groups, and you can segment your email list. This possibility to, to divide, you can have an email list just for the art lovers that don't want to have all kinds of information, uh, other content, and you have people that do. And then once you get an understanding of what their needs are, you can tag them. You can segment your list so that you have can send specific emails just to the art, just the art buyers, or to people that are want to engage with more of your content. So segment segmenting your list. There are lots of uh, videos on YouTube about that for um, you to have a look at. See any more questions? I think most of my followers are other artists. How do I find people who potentially buy my art? Should I follow other businesses like Arctic, special hat, hashtags? Definitely. Yeah, most of us start our social channels out connecting with friends and family, people that we know, and usually artists and creatives are part of that, part of our community. But start following people that you want them to follow you. Have a think, where do you see your art hanging? What people would potentially uh, engage with your art, whether that's an, uh, architects, interior designers, uh, businesses, or maybe you're in a personal people with certain genre, people with certain hobbies. Where are they? Start following them because also with that's the back end, the algorithms of your social and your website, they'll be looking at who's engaging with your content. And if it's just engaged, artists engaging with your content on your social feeds, with your Insta accounts, then they're going to just show that to artists or if it's just friends and family those are the people that are going to be seeing it but you can specifically build up followers by who you follow so be careful who you follow especially like in facebook for example the pages that you can like you don't want to just like you know people send you please like my page it's all about pet grooming you don't want to be following the those pages you can set up another profile maybe for that but this is you want to see your social channels uh, as a business follow pages that are um, that interlink with what you're doing so gallerists curators um, art supply people that are working at maybe something with art supplies um, other uh, collectors so that are more relevant to your niche or for your art forms and hashtags yes definitely use hashtags not huge not just art hashtag art but try and get use that local if your audience are more local artists in Aarhus Denmark local artist like I live in Baden I could add that uh, location sticker to my stories because you're filtering already out um, the whole big global uh, world out there you're getting more and more specific and the chance are far greater that you're going to be found hopefully that answers your question thank you for all the great questions and for the interaction uh, why would you choose to have your own shop on your website versus etsy for example 
Yeah, also a very good question. When you're just starting out, maybe you don't have the possibility to have your own shop. So Etsy is a great, you know, there's a platform, it's tried and tried and tested, and there are a lot of people active there. So you don't have to sort of start from scratch. When you have your own website, you have far more control. You have control of who comes onto your website. You have more control. You can uh, run ads to your website, so Facebook or Instagram uh, ads to get people to engage with the content on your website. On your website, you also have your statistics. So there's the back end. You can go to Google Analytics. So that's sort of integrated with your website. You can see who is coming onto your website. You can actually put a heat map underneath your website. You can exactly see where people are taking their mouse. What buttons are they pressing on? Maybe your website's not clear enough and they're skipping your shop uh, tab altogether because they're far more interested in what's happening down or they click on a social icon and then they leave your website. So bringing people onto your website, you can, of course, then you have control. You have direct access to them if your website is well constructed to take them to those shopping channel. You can take them to that uh, shop where they engage with the payment system, see your art and engage your art very specifically. You don't have that when you go to Etsy. You do, of course, have some statistics. And when you sell on Instagram, you have an Instagram business account. You have some kind of idea. But on your website, you have more um, analytics. And that will just help you refine your customer experience and that how your potential art by experiences your channels and in, in experiences your website. And also then people are coming into a more quiet place. Internet's busy, Facebook is busy, Instagram's busy, Etsy is very busy. <laughs> Lots going on, ads popping up and little, you know, uh, images, suggestions. Lots of other artists are there too, so you're not alone. When you're on your website, you can give a more peaceful, calm experience. And art needs that. You know, you think of a gallery. It's not something that people are shouting and there's this beautiful music playing. There's a mood. There's a an ambiance where people experience the beauty of your art and your website you can accommodate that you can add you know the right photography the right words people have the calm and the more the focus to really engage with your art so that's just some of the advantage of your own website that you can grow towards you know don't make an obstacle thinking oh first need that perfect website to have a sales channel no you there are a lot of other possibilities that you can Learn from and see, you know, and get to know your audience, get to know who's engaging with your art, what works, what doesn't work. Maybe you need to work, work smaller. Maybe you need to work bigger. Maybe you need to change your pricing point. Maybe you need to change how you make your photos. Those are all testing grounds. So tomorrow, even today, you can start an Etsy account. Not a problem. It's there. It's, uh, you know, you don't pay that much uh, commission and you can engage. You can see, you know, how are people joining? Are they following? Are they liking? And then take it from there. You can use your Insta account, use your Facebook account to get all that information, refining your audience, and then go onto your website so you can have a shop shopping system system set up. Any more questions <laughs> as we end the session? <clears throat> There are so many art scams going around. Yes, for sure. I know that. <laughs> Been getting many emails of supported interests, but then realized it was a scam. For now, decided to only sell and advertise locally. Unfortunately, there are scammers out there. I had a good friend that um, got really excited about an exhibition that she was part of a virtual exhibition in China, had to pay quite a bit of money. And then it ended up being a big scam. And then she did some searches and there were so many lawsuits against this company. So definitely get good advice. See who else is uh, engaged with these uh, communities or with these projects. Uh, send emails to artists that have poss possibly worked with them and to ask, you know, what is your experience? Is it something that I can trust? Um, so yeah, just being informed and being aware that that's there, that you know, they make a lot of money uh, by scamming, especially, you know, you want to sell, you want to enlarge your audience and um, 
good that you've chosen to work locally. That's a, something that you can build relationship. As I said, that in-person is still the best strategy a channel that you can use because there's a trust. People know you can, you know, you can actually go to someone's home. You can find out what they're doing, that that's a real person. Um, so that's a good place to start. So hopefully that answers your question, being informed and very wise about that. All right, final question. I'm just starting. Yoo-hoo, what an in in uh, inspiring place, just starting. There's so much possible when you're starting. You don't have all that pressure. You don't have a list or a fan base. Is selling open edition prints a good idea? I sell prints on demand. What do you think? What do you think about limited edition prints? Yeah, there's that discussion. You have that open end where that you can print as much as you want. Usually that's at a lower price end. And then you have limited editions so that you choose, okay, I'm only going to do 100, I'm going to do 10, and they're going to be signed and they're going to be numbered. So it's more, um, there's a more, it's more, um, it's more specific. It's more, um, contained i'm looking for a word i'm not finding the word the word's there somewhere <laughs> it's going to come out uh, by making it limited you're of course limiting also your possibilities if you're just starting out why not just do open-ended prints set up a price point that you think okay this is fair this is something that your audience would be willing to pay for it and just take it from there then you see okay this is selling more why is this one selling more? This one selling less? Is it the color? Is it the composition? Is it the theme? Is it the size? And just do some market research just by selling open-ended editions. And then you can always say, okay, this is something that took extra time. It's extra special to you. You don't want you know, to have it um, open-ended. You want to have it limited. And then you choose like two or three that are going to be limited editions and um, stick to that. You know, if you say 100, it's going to be 100 and you're not going to make any more. Scarcity does sell. It's a good strategy. You know, there's only 10 of them available. Then people are sort of like, oh, there's only 10. I'd love to have one. You know, when it's all gone, <laughs> sold is sold. So that is part of your strategy that you can use. But when you're just starting out, don't limit yourself too much. Do open end and uh, experiment. And you can always choose certain part of your collection to be um, a limited collection. All right, guys, thank you so much for, um, for joining in the session. Hopefully this has inspired you and helped you uh, get some ideas about what's possible when it comes to selling your art, that there are strategies that you can use very specifically for your art form and for your um, price point, for your goal, what your art vision is. There's, you know, there's so much possible, so be very intentional about that. I am in this group in the community. If you have questions, just add the comments, you know, write in the group, ask each other, help each other, because I know the artists that are just starting out, they are experienced artists in this community. So help each other, you know, write, be bold and ask questions so that you can really make 2021 a totally different year. You can really make steps to grow and uh, not only as an artist, but also as an art entrepreneur so that you can start seeing that revenue stream coming in and take that slow and steady process towards more growth and more development okay <laughs> thank you everyone for your time stay safe and uh, keep creating making your beautiful art and then i'll be seeing you in the next session all right guys bye bye